Namaste i witajcie! Hello everyone, my name is Agnes and today I'm going to take you on a fascinating journey to explore the differences between two very fascinating yet very far apart countries, Poland and India. Why Poland and India? Well, I am originally from Poland and now I live in India, so I have an insight of how both countries are and I wanted to show you the differences from the perspective of what are the differences and what are the similarities between the two countries because I think there is more in common than what you may think. We will uncover many aspects of Central Europe and South Asia, so grab a chai or herbatka and let's go. So a lot of notes that I have prepared are taken from the all over the internet just to make sure that I provide you with the best information. However, don't take my word for it. If you're not sure or you think I'm incorrect, you can let me know in the comments below. I'm just giving you the insight. So this is just the information that I have researched for you guys. So a few of the things that I want to cover in today's video is the size of both countries, the differences between them, also the language, the type of the government that runs both countries, the currencies, the food, the weather and the educational system as well. Also at the end I want to mention the differences or the similarities between the cultures of both countries. So let's begin. So Poland is a fairly small country comparing to India. Poland's total size is 312,696 square kilometers. The size of India is obviously 10 times bigger as 3.287 million square kilometers. And with Poland's population of 38 million people, that makes 121 people per square kilometer as opposed to 395 people per square kilometer in India. So it is much more densely populated country than it is Poland. The capital of Poland is Warsaw, which is the biggest city of Poland, and it is 570 square kilometers. However, New Delhi, which is the capital of India, is only 42.7 square meter, which is quite interesting because Mumbai, for example, is 600 square kilometers, yet it is not a capital of India. The language spoken in Poland is Polish. We have few accents. If you, for example, go to southern part of country, you will hear different accent. However, you'll be able to communicate all around Poland. There is also English present in Poland, especially amongst younger generation or people working in the big corporations. And as we know, in India there is about 24 languages and mainly spoken is Hindi and English, although it is not spoken everywhere. When it comes to the government, Poland, just like India, has a multi-party political system with the president as a head of state and the prime minister as a head of government. Let's talk money. Now Poland is using Polish as water and despite Poland joining European Union in 2004, we're still using Polish as water and Poland is very much strong on not joining the Eurozone and I think that may not happen for the next few years. And the biggest denomination, the biggest banknote in Poland used at the moment is 500 water. And if you want to know the conversion, rate Polish water is equal to around 21 rupees depending on the day and currency exchange and the biggest denomination you can find in India however is only 500 rupees only but a few months ago there was still 2000 rupees available but that has been taken off the market religion now religion is a very big aspect of every country and in Poland you'll find that the country is predominantly Roma Catholic and I myself was brought up as a Roman Catholic and I used to go to the church and we used to celebrate Christmas and Easter as the two main festivals. And as you know, in India, there are so many different cultures and religions associated with India. Educational system. Now it is important to mention that Polish educational system is very well organized. Now in Poland, we have a primary, secondary and higher education and the children begin compulsory education from the age of seven and they must be in education until the age of 18. And obviously nowadays, because a lot of people work, they do put children in the nurseries and then the reception and you know lower education as well, just to make sure that they are prepped before they go to to a proper primary school. I wanted to mention that when children begin the education at the age of seven, they go through eight years of primary education from class one to class eight. Then from class nine, they have three options basically. One would be to go through a technical education, which is what I did, where you have five years of education, which allows you to go to university and also get you a diploma in some sort of some sort of a professional education, which I had diploma in economics. 
You can also go to like a general college, which will also allow you to go to university after, but this is if you have no kind of clue of what you wanna do in the future. And the third one is like a vocational qualification. So it will let you to have some sort of profession in an industry. For example, if you wanna become a barber or chef, you would go through a three year route. And after that, you would be able to be a, to have a qualification of a professional chef, for example. Let's talk the weather. Now the weather in Poland is very mild. We have four distinct seasons Season, as opposed to three distinct seasons in India. In Poland, we recognize winter, spring, summer, and autumn. Now we have winter right here. I'm sitting in front of my window where I see snow falling, which is beautiful. And the temperatures range from mild to freezing cold. So it can get anything from like plus two, plus three in the winter, all the way to maybe even 15. On the minus and the summers are beautiful we have lovely sunshine a bit of a rainfall as well so like in june would be nice and sunny with sunny spells every day whereas in perhaps july it would be a bit more of a rain but the weather ranges up to maximum 32 to 35 degrees celsius whether as we know in india the temperatures gets really hot up to about 40 degrees which gets hot. I know I've experienced it. I even had a heat stroke in India because it gets really hot. However, the winters are not as tough, obviously depending on the area, because as we know, India is such a huge country that you can experience mild to very warm weather. And the winters get cold only in the Himalayan areas or mountainside of India. Now, who doesn't like good food? And I tell you for one, Polish food is amazing. I was brought up eating Polish food and our food is what we call healthy and comforting because Polish diet is mainly non-vegetarian. We eat a lot of meat, we eat sausages, chicken, poultry. And I know in India, there's a lot of culture and emphasis on vegetarian diet and that's okay. The vegetarian diet can be very healthy as well. And the most popular and traditional dishes in Poland are bigos, gołąbki, pierogi, which you can compare to momos. So if you are in India, you would know momos, and this is kind of a similar food type, type of food to what we have in Poland. And the main seasoning that Polish people add to today's food is salt, pepper, and herbs. Whereas in India, you obviously have such a vast amount of spices, which adds flavor and taste to any meal that is cooked with it. And my favorite dishes in India are biryani and dal. Yes, I love lentils and dal is absolutely amazing. We also love sweets and in India you have sweets which are mainly based on milk powder and they are very sweet and sugary. In Poland we've got all sorts of sweets and we love our chocolates as well in Poland. Now the biggest similarity I find between the two countries are people. In general, people in Poland are very hardworking, social, friendly and family orientated, which I could also say the same about Indian people. So Polish people are not far different from Indian when it comes to those aspects. So in summary, Poland, although 10 times smaller than India, is also as beautiful and it has a lot to offer. And some of you might wonder, why am I not staying and living in Poland since it's such a beautiful country? Well, my answer to this is that sometimes life throws opportunities. And when I left Poland, I never imagined I would meet an Indian man, get married to him, live in England, and then later move to India with our three children. And as much as I love coming to Poland and enjoy spending time with my parents and my family and eating all the lovely Polish food, my heart is where my family is, my immediate family, my children and my husband. And this is why currently we live in India. If you've never been to Poland, it is quite a long way from India. You need to take about nine and a half hours flight to get to Poland, but it is well worth it. And it's increasingly becoming very popular destination for the university students because of the cost of living is much lower than for example, UK. And also the food is really good and the people are very friendly. So I really would love to invite you to come and visit Poland. And if you've never been, I would love to invite you to my hometown, which is Szczecinek, which you can see on the vlogs that I present to you guys, because at the moment I am in Poland, in Szczecinek, in my town, and I'm going to show you a lot about it. So if you wanted to see more, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel to see all the beautiful aspects of Poland and the food and the culture, which I am presenting to you guys. I'll see you soon. Take care.